Saints, blessings to you. We are doing a powerful teaching here. Give me one second. Doing a powerful teaching. Saints, in, um, there were altars and crowns. Solomon uh, is in a, a sowing rhythm with the Father. And in 2 Chronicles chapter 7, look at what the Lord does. Um, in 2 Chronicles chapter 7, look what it says right here. It says in verse 7, moreover, Solomon hollowed. That means like place it into a place of reverence, like sanctify for the Lord. Like, like um, make it an altar. He hollowed the middle of the court that was before the house of the Lord. And the fat of the peace offerings. For there he offered burnt offerings. Because the brazen altar which Solomon had made was not able to receive the burnt offerings and the meat offerings and the fat. Wait a minute. Solomon made an altar that could not even handle his level of sowing. So the degree that he's sowing, even his altar can't handle it. His altar can't take the level of seed that he's sowing. So he has to go on another altar and start sowing on that altar. Look at the, the intensity of, of Solomon's honor towards the Lord. And he's giving to God of his possessions. Now watch this, people of God. Look at, look at okay, a couple verses later. Let's go here. Look what it says right here in verse. Eleven, it says, then Solomon finished the house of the Lord in the king's house. Which is his own house. That's, that's what it's saying. And all that came into Solomon's heart to make in the house of the Lord and in his own house, he prospered, he prosperously effected. Now, saints, I could preach five hours on this. Do you hear what it's saying? Solomon had a desire to minister to the Lord's house and his house, his own house, which he owned. Then he sanctified a house unto the Lord. He's sowing like crazy in the house. He's doing mighty works of giving. And the Bible says that he prosperously effected everything that he wanted to accomplish. Look, sowing is the way to accomplish all of your dreams. This was a dream in Solomon's heart. The seed connects you to things that you fantasize about, things that are hidden in your imagination. He's using the law, the grace, the glory of sowing to effectively accomplish the purposes of his own heart that God put in there because he's a true worshiper. See, when you are sower, God gives you a prophetic heart. He'll let you see things. I was thinking about that the other day um, and the Holy Spirit said this to me. Uh, he reminded me after the baptism, uh, China, China been with me for years in the ministry and has helped me for years. After the baptism, we was walking and China said, can I kiss your feet? Now, the Holy Spirit was talking to me about this today out of nowhere. You know why? Because this was something that she saw in her mind. This is something that she saw in her mind. So 
She didn't force herself on me. She didn't make me. This is something that she thought about out of gratitude towards me. Remember the woman went and took her hair, wiped her hair at Jesus' feet with her tears. The Holy Spirit was talking to me about the innocence of that. You know how some people are evil and then there's some people that are, are just, they have no, they just are, are possessed with the love of God in one moment. I have bowed before Dr. Mike Murdoch before. I, all my seeds that I've sown into him, I've always, I'll never sow into him face to face. I'll bow and lay the seed at his feet. I've, I've done that since uh, 2015, 2014, 2015. That's how I was sowed. I never sowed hand to hand. I always sow my hand to his feet. When you're possessed with honor, there's creativity that God gives you. Listen to me, people of God. If you're taking notes, write that down because you write that on your page. When you are possessed with the honor of God, you will have creativity in your mind of how to give. Now, you don't have to give like someone else. I'm, I'm telling you right here. When, when, when you're possessed with honor. You will have creativity of how to give, of how to sow. You hear, you, you, are you listening to me, people of God? And in Acts chapter four, those people was possessed with honor. And the Spirit of God put in their mind to lay down their money at the apostles' feet. That's what the Spirit of God put in their mind. You never see one time in the text that the apostles were saying, make sure you sow your seed at my feet, sow your seed at my feet, sow your seed at my feet. Honor is God impacting your soul with power to receive heaven's schedule. Wow, wow. Honor is God impacting your soul with power to receive heaven's schedule. Are you seeing this? Honor is God impacting your soul to receive heaven's schedule. When honor cometh, all of your shame and insecurity dies. You're able to do stuff for the Lord that the average man can't do. Honor is a driving force from the spirit of God so that you don't miss your appointed time of favor. Wow. Saints, do you know that um, every time I've done videos with Dr. Mike Murdoch, I've done conferences at his church for free. He didn't charge me nothing. Nothing. But all those things was allowed to happen because I'm sowing into him. I'm honoring him. While I'm honoring him, the portals of his heart is carrying the picture of my face. Wow. Wow. 
Did, oh my gosh. The portals of his heart is carrying pictures of my face. So, so my face is inside of his heart all the time. So he could be eating a meal and all of a sudden, Prophet Joshua Holmes. And he even said, he even said publicly to his partners, he said, I'm talking about Prophet Joshua Holmes. Me and my wife is talking about you. He said publicly, he tell his team. Now think about this. Honor is the Holy Ghost supplying you a consciousness so that you don't miss divine favor. Wow, this deep, man. If you think about what I'm saying, I said honor is the Holy Ghost supplying you a consciousness so that you don't miss divine favor. There is a schedule in your act of generosity, your act of sowing. Many women don't sow and then you wonder why you attract bozos. Many men don't sow and you wonder why you got more lotion than you got motion. Don't think about it. <laughs> don't think about it. Adam was sowing. <laughs> <laughs> That's going to go over some of y'all yeah, head, but it's okay. You watch the replay. I'm not going to repeat myself. No, I'm not going to repeat myself. No, thank you. No, I can't do that. I'm not repeating myself. Thank you. Thank you. I'm not. No, I'm not. I'm not. So don't ask me. Thank you. Yeah, I'm not repeating myself. I'm not going to do it. Yeah, I'm not going to do it. Yeah, they want me to. I'm not going to do it, though. The seed is carrying the itinerary of your fulfillment, the itinerary of your joy. Are you catching this? Somebody need to write this down. Your seed is packaging all of your packages. What the Lord wants to drop off in addition to your life and add on to your life and give you more is all in your sowing. Seed sowing must go to sacrifices before there could be a clear path for the harvest to get to you in a, 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 a penetrating way, an unforgettable way, a memorable way. Are you hearing this? The seed must get into sacrifice before there could be an open pathway for the harvest to get to you in an undeniable and forgettable manner. The harvest is memorable because the seed was memorable. God just matching your energy giving you the same domain that you chose to sow out of. What is your domain in sowing? Do you sow fearfully? Do you sow regretfully? I should have used that money for something else. I should have used that money to do this. I should have used that. No, you never regret your sowing. That's why uh, Apostle Paul was teaching you. He was rebuking, uh, apostolic rebuke, saying, don't let the seed become grudgingly now, you know what happened when you got a grudge? That means you become bitter. When you got a grudge with somebody, you become bitter. When, when you hold grudges, you start being nasty to someone because you, you, you feel like they wronged you or, or whatever. He said, don't so grudgingly. He was saying, be aware of this. That shows you that Apostle Paul knew apostolically, prophetically, that Satan will try to interrupt your sowing with the wrong attitude so that the harvest won't have a clear path to get to you. Uh, see, I'm teaching you something on here. You, the harvest need a clear path to get to you. It can't get to you if, you if you're holding on to these attitudes and these traits that's adversarial to increase. It's adversarial to money. 
is adversarial to God's answers, is adversarial to the um, multiplication of the seed. Now, God multiplies the seed sown, not the seed thought about. If you take a note, write that down. God multiplies the seed sown, not the seed thought about. Demons are snatchers of sowing thoughts. They can grab your thought to sow if you linger not to abide by it. Wow. Whoa, 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 whoa. Did you hear what I just said? Demons are snatchers of your sowing thoughts. And they grab the thought if you linger not to abide by it, not to perform it. That's why that money will go elsewhere. You'll say, I'm a soul, and then you never sow. Well, you just let the demon snatch the seed. If the demon has authority to snatch the seed, the demon can snatch the harvest as well because the harvest is inside of the seed. So once the demon snatched the seed, the demon snatched the harvest. You're like, where my harvest? Where what God promised me? What God promised you is a harvest. He wraps it in your seed that he give to you so that you can show that you want your harvest. See, saints, let me just show you this. Let me talk to you. Let me, tell, let me talk to you, woman. The Lord know everything that you like, what you want, right? Now, you're not the next woman down the street. You're a woman all by yourself. You got your own peculiar desire. You got your own peculiar dreams. You got your own peculiar desires, fantasies, whatever, petitions. You're not the next woman down the street, okay? So there's a tailor-made life for you. You're not the next woman next door. You're not the next woman on Facebook. You're not the next woman on YouTube. You're not the next woman around the globe. You are a peculiar woman yourself. So let me show you something. God is going to test you and hide everything that you are supposed to receive in what you already received. Wow. Listen, men, you're a peculiar man. There's no other man like you, according to your mindset. You, you have certain things that you want. As a man, you're not the next man down the street. You're not the next man in your city. There are certain things that you dream about. I know. Because I had different dreams when I was young. I had dreams. Uh, some of it was spiritual. <laughs> Bless God. Some of it was sexual. <laughs> especially, especially when you get into a zone. And, um, some of it was material. Some, some of it was... Uh, some of it was in the bracket of uh, uh, mindsets, ideas, creativity. Um, some of it was in the realm of uh, exercise, different goals. Uh, so you're not the same man as everybody else. All right. So let me just say this. It's going to be impossible for you to get what God has for you tailor-made if you don't become a sower. I know this. I know this. Let me say this. My son Juan, Juan been with me for years. One, one year, I rebuked Juan and I told him, I said, uh, there's a lot of things that God want to do for you that he's not going to do until you start um, walking strong 
in your sowing anointing. Do you know I didn't pay for Juan's car? I didn't buy his car. I didn't give him money for the car. He has a truck that he got by miracle power. And I told him this would happen. I said, I'm not going to help you. <laughs> I'm going to let you sow. I'm not going to make this. I'm not going to do it physically. I'm going to let you understand for yourself. You're going to sow and you're going to reap your harvest. Now you know why I teach that. No, nobody, nobody is a, nobody is going to get a harvest off of uh, you just thinking that somebody, hey, I just wish somebody helped me. No, you got to be intentional. I know this, man. I was, I was homeless. You know that, right? When I started sowing at, at, at that zone I was in, I had left everybody that could help me. I was in a zone where I didn't know nobody. I was just sowing on my altar. That's how everything happens. You have your own altar. Nobody is on that altar. And like I told you, as men, we got different appetites. A man has several different appetites they have. He has a sexual appetite. He has a sexual appetite. Many men don't know how to talk about that. But there's a sexual appetite. When you come into this world, look what God gave you with your equipment. <laughs> look what he gave you with your equipment. You can't deny that equipment now. <laughs> you go try to take a shower. <laughs> you can't, hey, hey. You can't deny that equipment. It don't, it don't matter what you try to do. You can try to say you praying, you fasting that equipment right there. Same with a woman. You look down, look at your chest. You see all this stuff. And remember, I told you, horniness is that you want to be touched. <laughs> That's what horniness is. <laughs> it's, a, it's a desire. To, <laughs> it's, it's a desire. Horniness is a desire to be touched. Oh, we need to talk about this because you 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 need to understand what how to manage this. <laughs> when you're horny, it means that you want to be touched. That's why people start touching themselves. But you 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 need the the understand <laughs> the understanding of it so that you won't be subject to how you feel with the body but you will be the one driving the body rather than the body driving you. But you, you're not going to be able to deny how you feel. Saints, do you know, and, and, and let me say something real raw. <laughs> Did you know <laughs> that there are people that when they go through troubles, they actually get more horny than ever? You know why? Because things are not going right for them. They're not hearing no good reports. So they actually are longing more aggressively to feel some type of pleasure. Like I told you before, why do you think in the hood so many people get pregnant? Not, not just the hood, but why do you think during the summertime people get pregnant? Because they get bored. They, they not have no pleasure in there. Boom, boom, boom. Everybody connecting with each other, party, whatever. Everybody in bathing suit. Everybody... And what happens is the whole earth is overpopulated because not because God wanted all these people here per se, as far as, you know, I picked this person to have sex with this one. So this child will come from. No, that's not happening. People have their own will. So if a man right now, I could create a child right now. Right now, the man down the street could create a child right now. That does not mean that the child that he created, God had scheduled him to create that child. No, he just took what God had entrusted to him and he used it. As a man, you have life inside of you. 
And then you have life in your sexual parts. A woman has life in her sexual parts. I'm explaining this to you. You have life in your body, in certain parts of your body. Did you know that your fingers have life? Your ears have life. When someone is deaf, they don't have life in their ear. So when Jesus healed the deaf man, all he did was place life in the ear. It was dead. When Jesus healed the blind men, their eye bulbs was disconnected. The power circuit was not working. All Jesus did was put life in the eye bulbs. The girl, Jairus' daughter, was laying down right there. That's where she died. The same place that she was when she was alive, she died. And when he rose up, she was in that same place. What am I saying? I'm saying all the difference was there was no life in the body. The resurrection pit the life back in the body, pit the soul back in the body. So your body is full of life portals. And you have sexual life portals. Now, I want you to see this. The reason why the Holy Ghost have you um, die to yourself and learn wisdom is because even though you have those life portals in your sexual parts, you're not always supposed to use them. As a matter of fact, oftentimes when you are God's woman, you are God's man, he will not let you use those life portals in your sexual parts because he has to purge you. Number one, he has to purge you from relationships of old where you use those sexual parts illegally. We call that Duxon without a license. <laughs> or if I want to say this to get you mad, I call it crooks that ducks. Crooks that ducks. Crooks that ducks. I got a, I got a son that got a... Uh, no, nah, I'm not going to say his business. Oh, no. But he got a funny name to his business. Now, even if God is not purging you from that, well, you say, well, prophet, why am I not using the life circuits in my sexual parts? Because it may not be time. Listen, everybody think that they're qualified to have sex. Sex requires the spirit of God to rule the soul. Because though people have thought they could handle sex, they cannot. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> let me just say this here. Some of you women out here, some, 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 you understand because why was that person so crazy towards you if you had never dooks them? It, it, <laughs> I'm not saying that's always the case. I mean, you both know that there's always going to be crazy people that you don't, you don't have uh, physical contact with, you know. But I'm just saying. But when you understand your value, <laughs> you will understand that you can't even go with people because they, they will get hooked. You see what I'm saying? Let me talk to the brothers, because these women up here always want to take up my line. I don't know why y'all, I'm not talking to y'all. The brothers always quiet, but they be listening. So I'm going to talk to the brothers. As men, that life circuit in your sexual parts will become a, a, a big examination for you. Because there will come a time where even though you're flowing with God, your, your sexuality wants to manifest real strong and that will be another part of your kingship that you will have to prove to the Lord I will govern this until you send 
me some legs, you see what I'm saying, until you send me some uh, Mike Tyson got in that room and that woman, <laughs> the woman up there, she tried, to, she tried to tempt him a little bit. She tempted him. She tried to, she tried to act like she was innocent. She tempted him and Mike was like, she was like, she, she tried to leave the room. Mike was like, no, you're not leaving. <laughs> you're going to do what you, you're going to do what you was telling me you was going to do. Mike said, no, nah, no, nah, you're not, you're not going, no, nah, we're not going, uh-uh, you're not leaving. <laughs> sit, sit down, sit, you. Mike didn't just do that, man. <laughs> we know Mike was a warrior, but he didn't just, he didn't just pull up on that woman. She pulled up on him. And then when she tried it, she, she was like, no, nah, no, nah, nah, I don't want you. Because he was too rough. That's what happened. He was too rough. She was like, no, no, he, no, 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 you're going to do what you said. <laughs> you said you, <laughs> you said you was going to do it. You're going to do what you said. <laughs> you, you're going to do what you said. You said. All right, so um, now look at Second Chronicles chapter seven verse uh, twelve. Look at this here. Okay, so let let me say this before we close off on this uh, part. So you, as a man, you have sexual desires. God gets those sexual desires to you via your honor to Him. You unlock his compassion for you as you honor him. God looked at Adam and felt bad for Adam. God said, Adam is not having any sex. He don't know what it feel like to enter a woman. He don't know what it feel like <laughs> to go to Mount Zion. <laughs> so, let me, he don't under, he, ne, he never experienced a vacuum. So let me make you a help me comparable <laughs> for you. Look, God didn't say for Cain. God didn't say a help me comparable for your sons in the future. A help me. <laughs> A uh, help me comparable for you. That means she specialized in your sex activities. How you like it done. You need to understand this so that the devil don't make you operate in illegal sex. You see what I'm saying? When I say illegal sex, I mean like God didn't schedule you to have sex with that person. You need to know this though. Did you know that a lot of people have sex that God don't want them to have because they simply are not conscious of, yes, God has scheduled my sex life in harvest. The revelation of the harvest creates self-control. The revelation of the harvest creates self-control. If you're taking us, write that down. The revelation of the harvest creates self-control. If you're taking us, write that down. The revelation of the harvest creates self-control. You have more dominion over yourself through your consciousness of the harvest. The reason why you feel out of control is because you forget the harvest. The Bible said, for the joy that was set before him, Jesus endured the cross. So, so the cross is, oh my gosh, this was the most heinous death, the most heinous suffering, the most heinous pain, worse than ever before in human history. 
And Jesus endures it. You know why? Because for the joy that was set before him. It was the joy that took his self-control to the next degree of purity. And what I'm saying to you is, you'll need to know this, that if you don't want to make any bad moves in your sexuality, if you don't want to make any bad decisions in the realm of sex, understand the harvest that has already been planned for you sexually. I know what I'm doing in here. I know what I'm doing in here. As an apostle and prophet, I'm telling you by the Holy Ghost that the sexual demons will not have more of a voice than the sexual angels because God made the sex for you in due time. So you don't got to listen to the sexual demons trying to get you to violate the sexual plan of God because you're not comprehending that everything that you... Now, saints, let me just say this on a jokey side. Some of your sexual fantasies, you can't really handle it. <laughs> you, you have thoughts when you're not sexually active, but when, you, when the time comes, it may be too much for you. I just want to say that too. And God don't give you more than you could bear. So with that being said, <laughs> and I mean that vice versa, because brothers be talking, man, dog, you know what I'm saying, dog, you know, and then You got to go sleep with earphones on and stuff, you know. You gotta go. I got to go work in the morning. I got to go work. So in some sexual desires, you should say, Lord, let your will be done. Because you, you, when you're horny and you're not sexually active, you may be requesting something from God or hoping for something from God that you really can't handle. So the best thing that you would say is, Lord, let your will be done sexually for me. Let your will be done. Because sometimes when you're not in the floor of doing something, you, you would think the same way. Okay, have you ever fasted for a long period of time and you like, man, I'm going to eat this big old mouse of food. I'm about to buy this. I'm about to eat this and I'm about to get these snacks and get this drink and this. And then when you get off the fast, you go eat and you can't even eat much. I'm, I'm showing you. You, you. But you said that you was going to buy that steak. You were going to buy this. You are going to drink this. You are going to go there. You are going to have this food. You are going to have this snack. You are going to go grocery shopping here. And then when you get off the fast, you, you can't do none of that stuff. You like, you eat your first meal and you be like, man, I'm good. You see? I, so that, that goes in the realm of sex too. Sometimes you're fantasizing about extra stuff simply because you're not in the activity. You know, nobody really would talk to you this day, have a mantle on them. You know that, right? I, I wouldn't know somebody that would, you know, talk to you about this with a mantle on it. I mean like raw stuff like this. But this happens. This happens. W what do you do as a woman when you're worshiping and wet? You think that worship means that you don't get wet? So you'll need the wisdom of how to handle that other side. Or else the devil will give you the interpretation. You see? Or else the devil will start guiding you. 
You see that? Or else the devil will intercept that realm where you're wet and eventually you're outside of worship now because you didn't get the understanding from God about that department. The same way. What happens when you're holy and hard? I, I, I really want to say when you're long and strong. That's what I really want to say. What 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 do you do? Huh? What do you do when Satan speak in your ear and tell you <laughs> so, somebody missing out on their blessing right now? I could be a blessing to somebody right now. What what do you do when Satan tell you that? Huh? You put your name on the dating website, huh? You start looking for the next one, huh? What? No. You got to have wisdom of how to deal with that section. So when you as a man look and you see yourself and Satan say, you know, you should be using this, you know. But see, now I'm talking about this. Satan not going to be able to bother you like Satan will bother you. You see what I'm saying? Because I don't I don't let you know how the serpent talk. So when Satan have you look in the mirror and tell you, look, look at yourself. Or you're a woman. Tell you turn around. You know, look at you. You up there, you come out the shop. Look, look, look. You know, I I I I I whoop de woo. And and have you see this stuff be happening. And see, let me just give you all a secret right here. Let me just give you a secret. See, I'm talking real raw, but you need to hear it like this because it's from wisdom, right? When you come out the shower, you, you live alone, pitch you some clothes on. <laughs> don't, don't, don't come out the shower and just be dwelling. <laughs> Pit on your underclothes, cover up yourself, and shift your focus. You see what I'm saying? Don't be don't don't be sitting out. <laughs> oh my gosh. Oh. Don't be sitting out. Don't be sitting out. You just came out the shower. You up there. You ain't got no. You ain't even put the towel on full. You just chilling like you. You you just cover up yourself. <laughs> Come. <laughs> See when people get older, that's okay. You can do it when you're older. Cause oh, when you get older, you sit in the car when you arrive at your place. Like you be in your car for about two hours. Before you go inside your place. You see what I'm saying? Don't just sit there. <laughs> Don't just sit there and 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 dwell because Satan gonna tell you what you could do with your nakedness. Now, I, now watch this here. I'm gonna bring this back home. You know, see, I'm telling you jokes and stuff, but I'm gonna bring it back home in the wisdom, in the prophetic anointing, right? The apostolic watch. Remember, God told Adam, who told you you were naked? You see? God told Adam, who told you that you were naked? So, the serpent has always been interpreting what people should do and what they are in nakedness. The voice of Satan would penetrate a moment during nakedness. You see? Yeah. So, so that, that was a naked situation. And now look at how the voice of Satan is ruling. God is saying, who told you? How is there another interpreter of your nakedness? 
How is another voice able to define your activities in your nakedness? So remember this, that when, when you stay naked too long, you leave yourself open for a lot of other uh, things. So picture draws on, baby. <laughs> picture draws on, yeah. Don't, when, when you put lotion on, don't lotion them areas all extra. You see what I'm saying? Don't lotion them areas all <laughs> You, you, you look. <laughs> you done, you done lotion that area about five times. Baby, move on to the next area, baby. Move on. Don't keep on lotion. You lotion there five minutes. It's five minutes. Five minutes. You done climaxing yourself. No, just keep on moving on. Cover the part where you done lotion. Where your sexual life is. <laughs> then the devil start telling you, remember, you were touched like this. You remember you? And, and see, now Satan. Now Satan is doing the same thing. Prevailing in nakedness. Prevailing in the revelation of nakedness. So, Cover up yourself. Now, what would be funny when people are older, I mean, they could handle it. They could get naked and nothing be happening because they just get tired quicker. <laughs> you know, when people get older, they get tired quicker. So when they come out the shower, it's like it was a full blown workout. All right. <laughs> so, so, <laughs> so, so when they come out the shower, I mean, older people can get away with it. Cause they they not always thinking that sexual, but when you when you younger, there's there is a, a a flow of you know life in your sexual parts because there's a possibility of pregnancy, there's a possibility of you know all those different type of things. So you do have an extra bolt of lightning moving on. You see, what I'm saying so. See, I just gave you all so much stuff. I gave you so much stuff. I gave you so much stuff. I just literally exposed the serpent so you don't lose. Because this is what the devil tell you. And see, some of you women, you won't understand this. The, the, the realm where Satan fights a man is by having a man study his equipment. <laughs> In Second Chronicles chapter seven. That's why when you go over to somebody's house, if they got a teenager and y'all do a handiwork and they hand you that, um, what they call that thing, that measure stick, don't touch it. Put some gloves on because Look what 2 Chronicles chapter 7, verse 4 says, or uh, uh, verse 12. It says, after Solomon sold, it says, the Lord appeared to Solomon by night 
and said unto him, I have heard thy prayer and have chosen this place to myself for an house of sacrifice. Wow. 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 I'm about to continue on this, okay? I'm about to continue on this. It's real powerful. I'm about to continue on this. Stay on the line. 